2017 iPad 9.7 inch two months later that video is coming up right now let's go <laughs> So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and I have had this iPad 2017 9.7 inch for about two months now and I want to share with you my experiences here, how it's been and should you buy it here after two months later I'm giving you kind of a long term review here so let's get on to the points. So the first point I want to discuss is the durability. Now I've noticed that this iPad does feel very similar to the iPad Air 2 but maybe slightly thicker. So the build overall has felt pretty much identical to say the iPads of past or even a MacBook. It has a nice soft feel on the aluminum here. It comes in three different colors, space gray, silver, and gold. And overall I think you guys are going to feel like this is a premium iPad especially considering that this is $329 or $429 respectively. Overall, this iPad just feels kind of similar to a MacBook as well on the back. Now, the glass is laminated here, so you can see there is a gap between the glass and the display, so that does make it feel a little cheaper than the iPad Pro lineup. But overall, I don't think you guys are gonna have any issues when it comes to the build. It felt premium, pulling it in and out of a bag always felt nice and solid. So definitely after two months, I'm loving the build quality here, especially considering its price point. All right, guys, so let's take a quick second to talk about the design of the iPad 2017. And this actually retains a very similar, you know, classic design of iPad, kind of close to, like I say, the iPad Air 2 or the iPad Pro 9.7 of last year and that's not all bad i mean it's got very precise cutouts for the speaker so, um, and there is you know pretty decent volume that comes out of these as well and you know volume buttons feel good there is no mute switch here on this ipad which is not the coolest thing but hey we can live without that we do have software controls for that i'm liking that the 3.5 millimeter headset jack was retained and overall it's got a clean look it just doesn't look anything you know out of the ordinary it's an ipad if you see this design you're going to say well i've seen it before it's an ipad but I still like it. You know, it's a pretty solid device overall. I, I do think that Apple should thin out the bezels if they're going to come out with another budget version of the iPad. They should thin these bezels out on the next edition, kind of like they did with the 10.5 and hopefully they do this with the 12.9 Pro as well. So I think it does need a slight design update in terms of the bezels, but other than that, very clean here, even in the year of 2017. And two months later, the design has never felt, you know, extremely amazing because I'm used to iPad, but it definitely hasn't felt like, you know, it's a cheap tablet, still one of the better designs on the market. So in terms of portability and weight of the iPad 9.7, it's been extremely portable. You know, it weighs 1.5 or 1.05 pounds, 469 grams, and it's extremely light. I mean, anyone could one hand this thing unless you're an extremely young child or something and this becomes a little bit too heavy for you, but definitely anybody can one hand this thing. It's super light. It will go into pretty much anybody's bag with ease. Um, it's not going to be the super easiest thing to go ahead and type with one hand. You might have to go ahead and get, you you know a keyboard or something to go along with this to make the typing experience quicker but definitely small enough not as quite as light as an ipad mini but definitely light definitely light 1.05 pounds on this guy and two months later i can say that you know if i had no issues throwing this in the bag it felt like it wasn't even there when i was biking or doing stuff like that in terms of software, I don't want to talk too long about the iPad 9.7 2017 because I think most of us know this is the most expansive app ecosystem on any tablet right about now. So in terms of the software, this is iOS 11 here or 10 on this guy, not 11. 11 will be coming soon. I think it does need 11. It's going to update this and make it a lot better for everyday use. But for now, it's our playing grid of apps with tons of apps we can use day to day. And actually, I found that with this software, I'm actually able to get quite a few things done productively. You can do notes on here. Here. You can go ahead and shoot video on here, edit video on here. Had no issues doing that here on iMovie. It was fast enough. And you can play games here pretty much with ease on the 2017 iPad. So super slick software. I do notice it's a little bit stuttery and glitchy um, from time to time. Hardly ever, but it just doesn't feel quite as smooth as the laminated display on the Pro series of devices. But definitely it's smooth enough. And I don't think everyday users are going to complain at all about this. So two months on software, I'm going to give it a solid 9 out of 10. It's been performing quite well for me here on a 2017 iPad two months later. 
So in terms of battery life on the 2017 iPad 9.7, this thing actually goes well over 10 hours in my use. It gets about 11 or 12 hours in my daily use with this guy. So definitely if you're looking for a great battery life on an iPad, this one might even give you a little bit better battery life than the iPad Pros because this has less RAM than those devices and more RAM sucks more power. So battery life overall here on the iPad has been great, the 2017 edition. I wish they did bring low power mode here to our battery life that would be great but this does take a while to charge unless you get the charger brick that's a little bit larger than the one that comes in the box so i would consider getting the larger wattage hour apple sells it or you can get it online somewhere if you want to charge this quicker because it does take at least four to five hours to fully charge this thing so definitely great battery life but a long charge time as per usual with most ipads so a lot of people have been asking me, how has the gaming performance been on that 2017 iPad? And I'm actually going to do a full in-depth like, gaming comparison on this tablet. But for now, I can just tell you that it's been pretty phenomenal. I mean, most iOS games are very optimized when it comes to their platform. So what I mean by that is developers spend good time making sure that these run very well here on iPads and iPhones because they know there's a large user base for them and they don't want to give an impression that their app is slow and glitchy. Also, Apple's combination of hardware and software with their in-house GPUs are definitely making these devices just run extremely smooth. So gaming is going to be no issue for those of you who want to play some mobile games on here. This thing can handle pretty much everything you throw at it. And honestly, I couldn't really tell the difference between this and the iPad Pro 9.7 that I have in the studio. It pretty much feels the same unless I'm doing like the most heavy of heavy games where then this might choke just a little bit. But everyday users, you're going to be just fine here. And two months on, when I grabbed the game on here, I had no issues playing it or having fun with this iPad 2017. So throughout this review, I've been pretty positive overall about my opinions and, you know, assessments of the iPad 2017, but are there any negatives to this device? And I would say there are a couple of negatives. Number one is that display is not laminated. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, come on, Nick, at 329, we wouldn't expect Apple to go ahead and do that. But you know what? Actually, I would because, you know, the iPad Air 2 had it. The iPad Air 2 has came down. I don't think this is a technology that is going to really raise the price too much on an iPad that only has two gigs of RAM and an A9 CPU. So I do believe they could have did this. Maybe put the laminated display, put the price more at like 350 to 399 I think that still would have been a home run hit here for the iPad. But they decided to go with this older technology that harkens back to the days of the iPad 3, iPad 4. And um, it's just, it's not acceptable. I really don't like it too much, but hey, I think anybody who doesn't care about display tech is not going to care. So that's just my personal opinion. I don't, I'm not trying to say don't buy this laptop because of a laminated display. But if you do use the True Tone technology that's built into the iPad Pro, you'll notice that the colors do shift on the display, making for an easier reading experience on that iPad. So that's another negative. This doesn't have True Tone display. But again, we wouldn't expect that would be in a cheaper tablet. They had to cut some corners here. Also, you don't have any flash on this iPad here. Not a big deal, but it kind of is a big deal when you want a flashlight app and you're you know, trying to walk through the house at night or whatever, or you're in the garage you're trying to look under the car, you only got your iPad on you and you need something here, you don't got it there on this iPad. So keep that in mind. Other than that, not really any other negatives. Pretty stellar device all the way around besides those three points, but I had to point them out there just to keep it fair pretty much wraps it up here for me of the 2017 iPad 9.7 two months later. I think it's a great tablet. I think you guys are going to love it and it offers one of the best values in the tablet market, if not the best value in the tablet market. You get so much for your money here at 329 I think it's a definite win and for the long term, it's going to be great. Let me know if you guys want to see future long term coverage of the iPad 2017. Thumbs it up down below if you'd like to see that. Share this with one friend you think might find this video useful and uh, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Subscribe for more tech videos like this. I will catch you all in the next one and peace.